Hello, fifth graders, and welcome to another video science test review. Today, we are going to be talking about air currents and wind. Just real briefly here, in this chapter, it talks about oceans and land breezes and why those happen. The sun shines down on the earth, but the earth heats up unevenly because land heats up and cools off faster than water. So the air above land when the sun is out is going to be warmer or hotter than the air above the water because the land is heating up faster. And so the cold air over the ocean is going to want to rush over where uh, the warm air is because remember everything in nature wants to be balanced. So the cold air that's all cramped because remember the air molecules all come together during colder air. They all rush over to the warmer air and go down because gravity pulls the air molecules down and the warm air gets ramped up. During the nighttime, the land cools off faster so the air above land is going to be cooler and the air above the ocean is going to be warmer now. So the cool air once again wants to rush out to the ocean during the nighttime and the warmer air is going to blow over land during the nighttime. So we already covered that concept. If you want to look at it again, I think it is in the last lesson. Uh, I believe the title was called The Water Cycle. Okay. Let's continue on here today's um, lesson. And we're going to once again be talking about air current and wind. And this is all about global winds. You are going to want to use the same type of concepts that we just talked about with the ocean and land breezes when we talk about global winds. Basically what happens is when the sun is, uh, well, it's always shining on the earth, it is going to be more directly shining on the equator. You can see it is shining on the earth in the middle on the equator at a 90 degree angle. It is directly dead center. Whereas in on the top of the earth, the sun is barely grazing the earth up at the top and it, at, it is at a 180 degree angle. So it's barely skipping the top of the earth. So the intensity of the sun's rays in A is going to be a lot stronger. Why? Because it's not as thick. When the sun's rays hit the earth, it's going to be a lot more intense because look at how small it is. Okay, Smaller equals hotter because the warm air molecules are moving around in a lot smaller area. So it's more intense. More squished is more intense. The sun's rays, the intensity of the sun's rays at B is going to be a lot less because the ray is covering a lot bigger surface area. Look how much surface area is being covered here because it's barely skipping over the top. It's covering more of the earth, but because it's stretched out more, the surface it's covering more surface area, B is going to be a lot less hot. Look at these guys. They have a lot more room at B than A. Now, just for quick clarification here, because I was getting a little confused, but hopefully this doesn't make you more confused. I am not saying that the equator is all A. This does not represent what the air molecules look like in the equator. A is only showing the intensity of the heat at A, right there at impact. So once the sun hits the earth at A, that's what the intensity looks like. But the entire equator, the air molecules do not look like that. Only at the point of contact when the sun hits the earth, that's the type of intensity we have. Same thing with B. Okay? This does not represent what the air molecules look like all over the place here in the northern part of the earth. It only represents the point of contact of B right there up at the top. So just in this area is B, just what the air molecules look like there at A. 
But in the equator, we talked about that in warm air, there is a lot more room to move around. Okay, so maybe I'll draw it here. What the air molecules look like in, at the equator, they are still much more spread out. They're moving around faster, right? Colder air does not move around fast, but they still have plenty of room to move around. What the air molecules look like where it's cold is they are not moving around very fast, but there is a lot less room. They are cramped. The air molecules are not moving around very much, but they are a lot more squished. So once again, A only represents right at impact, right there at this little piece. B, this only represents the point of contact where the sun's rays are hitting the earth, right there. Other than that, this is what uh, the air molecules are looking like in the warm and cold environments. All right, now that we kind of understand that, the cold air wants to rush into the equator. Why does the cold air want to rush into the equator? It's the same thing that we talked about with the land and sea breezes. The cold guys are squished. They don't want to be squished. Everything in nature wants to be spread out and balanced. So these cold guys go, hey, look at all the room that these warm guys have. That's not very fair. Let's go. Let's rush to the warm area. And so the cold guys go rushing into the equator. And the warm guys get pushed out outside of the equator. Same thing is happening up here. Right? Now, what is this area called? You have this little strip here. And then you have this little strip here. So this little strip, this little strip. This is basically a mini picture of this. These are called trade winds. In between the equator and 30 degrees north and the equator and 30 degrees south are called trade winds. Quick question. Do these winds blow in predictable ways over long distances? As we talked about in class, yes, they do. Because the sun is always going to be warming up the equator the most because of the intensity of A. Well, if the sun is always going to be warming the earth at the equator more than it is any other area, the equator is going to be warmer always. And so if the equator is always warmer, these winds are always going to be blowing in the same direction. So yes, they are predictable um, in the ways blowing over these long distances. The fact that these are blowing over long distances, you know, we're talking the entire earth here. That's why these winds, trade winds, is an example of something called global winds. Winds that cover a large portion of the globe. Okay, now we're talking about convection. This is just a simple vocabulary word or a scientific term to explain how warm air moves, warmness moves through the air. Okay, the movement of heat through the air, which is gas, if you blow onto your hand, you can feel. You can feel the air hitting your hand. That's because the air is made, is gas. The air is gas. You can feel it. It's made of something. So as warm air moves through this gas, it is called convection. So every time you see one of these warm arrows, that is convection because the air is moving this heat, you know, to different parts of the earth. So that is called convection, just a big science word for heat moving through the air. All right, that is pretty much it. This is all about air currents and wind. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me on Edmodo or Facebook. I hope this uh, helped you for the test, and I look forward to seeing you guys in class.